What's going on guys? Garrett Kinnon from On The Water. Today we're going to be looking for some post-spawn early June largemouth bass. Also maybe some nice pickerel as a bycatch would be cool. So that's what we're going to be doing today and then hopefully, hopefully we get on some fish. A lot of these bass are up pretty shallow right now, but so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be throwing some spinner baits and then our spinner bait is uh, relatively, you know, it's not weedless, but it does get through the weeds and, and cover pretty good. And we have that extra little trailer hook there, which is just put on by a little stop, which keeps it from going up too high. Trailer hooks on spinner baits especially are extremely important. Um, I've lost or I've caught should I say a lot of fish that I would not have caught or, and I would have lost if I didn't have a trailer hook on my spinnerbait. Um, I'm throwing the 7.4 150HG Corrado DC from Shimano and I also have that on a Shimano Zodias rod, uh, 7 foot 2 medium heavy uh, and I have a 14 pound fluorocarbon line. This, all of this is a nice back cove. Right, there's the main section of the pond over there and it comes into this kind of shallow cove here. And the weeds are obviously you can see are all growing up, but warmer water and it's pretty shallow throughout the whole thing. And it really just sucks fish in from uh, the main part of the pond. So we're still gonna throw this red spinner bait, kind of imitating a crawfish or crayfish, either or, whichever you say. And uh, hopefully, We'll find, we'll get on some fish. That's the idea. Yeah, so this is gonna be annoying. Uh, where, oh my goodness. If you're fishing something like this, it doesn't, just because it's not necessarily weedless, doesn't mean you can't just power through a lot of those weeds. Um, you know, I love using the Z-Man chatter baits and a lot of times you just, you can whip those through and you just give it a rip and it'll rip through whatever weeds is sitting on it. And uh, there's a huge number of times when I've caught fish, especially bass, after you rip through, right? So you rip it through and then boom, the fish hits. Uh, so that's something to think about, I don't know. So take, take what I say, you know, as you will, we'll see how it works. But right now, it doesn't look too good. Uh, I'd love to get a big pickerel. That would be cool. Okay guys, so I hit my first stretch of the pond and no fish, unfortunately. Uh, the weeds have really grown up and I didn't really, I didn't bring the best tackle for a weedy area. So I'm working my way towards kind of the more main stretch of the pond. And I'm gonna keep waiting that. take a quick pause from my fishing to explain kind of what I'm doing and where we're going from here. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of these types of videos uh, and try to have them be educational and also show how much fish you can get on without a boat and without a kayak and without a canoe. I started on the water in the fall. Uh, I moved from upstate New York where my primary targets were muskies and smallmouth and uh, some largemouth. Uh, but up on the St. Lawrence Seaway in way upstate New York, um, the, that's some incredible fishing for smallmouth bass and muskies. Uh, so that's what I started doing and I really wanted to find an area where I could catch more fish and more diverse fish um, and also work in a field where um, I could be surrounded by fishing for the majority of my day. And I've been, I was really lucky to get involved with On The Water and it's been great. I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these videos and I would want to hear from you, what you guys wanna see. You know, that can be, what type of gear do you like to use? What kind of fish do you wanna see me catch? Um, leave all of this stuff in the comments. You know, I love to go out on missions. I love to find fish. So, you know, if there's things you guys wanna see, what we can do, um, you know, people at On The Water and myself included are fishing every single day. The amazing thing about where we live here on Cape Cod and where we're based out of on Cape Cod 
is the number of different species we can target. The saltwater fishing is unbelievable, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but kind of that hidden gem here is the freshwater fishing. So, you know, you can catch amazing pickerel, great largemouth bass, amazing smallmouth bass, incredible trout fishing, incredible panfish fishing, which I love to do. And I wanna know what you guys would like to see. Leave it in the comments below what you would like us to go target. It will be me a lot of the time, but I will also be bringing different uh, different members from the office out with me. Really the point of these videos is to be showing you guys what you can do with limited resources sometimes and limited time. You know, I've gone out on my lunch break and in an hour I've caught, you know, five largemouth bass, pickerel, and all types of things. It doesn't need to be as hard as sometimes people think. So the point of these videos is educational, entertainment, and being able to show you what's possible with fishing in just a limited amount of time. Again, leave in the comments below what you'd like to see us go for, what you'd like to learn. If there's questions you guys have, and they can be as simple or as complex to your level, and we'll cover all of them. Um, we have some unbelievable anglers in the office with a lot of knowledge and, and countless years of experience. So from you know beginning anglers to people that have been fishing for years, but it's still are maybe trying a new species or trying a new area and you've got questions, uh, we have answers for you guys or just things you want to see us try to do. So keep an eye out. We're going to be starting posting these types of videos a lot more. We want to hear, uh, we want your feedback. We want to know, do you like these videos? What would you like to see different? We're going to get back to largemouth fishing and maybe a pickerel. So we'll see what happens. trailer hook. I wouldn't have caught this fish without that trailer hook. And he spit it for me. Ah, nice little pickerel. Spunky little guy. And he's out. Bad large mouth. So this one he got both hooks, but that's only gonna sec double secure your catch. You pop one out and pop the other, and you're all set. Get him right back. So that's another thing about the trailer hooks is not only will they save you fish sometimes, it's just another single hook in there. So if one of those hooks pops out potentially, you know, if you don't get a great hook set on one, a lot of times the other one can save you that fish. So that one he had both in. All right, we're gonna work our way back. Continue to cast out because that's where I've caught all my fish have been out, you know, on a farther cast.
got a small pickerel on. And he's off, perfect. Much rather unhook a big, big fish than a little one. You know, and that, that cast right there really shows that, you know, to not, to not necessarily quit on a cast because that fish hit maybe eight feet in front of me. So especially when you're waiting, you're going quiet, these fish won't notice you all the time. So you don't want to, you don't want to burn a cast out before it's had its time to finish its run because a lot of times, not a lot, but occasionally those fish will follow you right up or they'll hit right in front of you or they're not looking at where you're walking. I think I can just walk around this dock, huh? Look at all that poop. Lots of fish activity, which is good. Oh. Yeah, this is deep here. I was wondering where that deep spot was. I'm gonna bring a different setup. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for me. Catching uh, caught some largemouth and some, uh, some pickerel while waiting. Uh, using my spinner bait with the with the trailer hook that seemed to be the ticket found a lot of all the fish I found or caught were in deeper water but I spooked quite a few largemouth up shallow so you know that tells you a few things it tells you one that the fish are spread out which, which is typical for post spawn behavior right so they all find their beds they, they, they spawn and then they're scattered they're looking for uh, they're looking for food they're gonna be in different depths some will still be shallow some are spawning later than others you know, so you really have to kind of go through and figure out where these fish are. And, uh, you know, the next time I would come to this spot, I would definitely bring something, you know, weedless that I can toss and maybe a slower presentation. All right, and uh, so I'll catch you guys next time.